Assalamualaikum. Dr. Abdullah here from... When it comes to spotting in the OSPE, students often have trouble in trying to differentiate some of the spots in an actual specimen. Models in comparison are much easier. But a specimen sometimes can be mangled, sometimes it doesn't call a typical presentation of the model or something in the textbook. So let us look at these specimens and how can you orient it and easily identify the spots to help you out in your OSPE. Below me, I have a set of specimens. We are going to move the models away and focus on these in front of us. Let's look at the one which is more intact before moving on to the one which is more difficult to appreciate. Right in front, here I've picked up the heart and I'm holding it in its anatomical position. You always need to start out with its orientation. What is the anterior surface? What is the posterior surface? The floor. The anterior surface is made by the right ventricle. And you can see the majority of it is right over here. You even appreciate the interventricular septum in the middle. This is also the area where you have the passage of the anterior descending artery, right over the anterior interventricular surface. Before move jumping to that, let's look at the other surfaces. If I turn it around, on the back side you see the posterior surface. Here you can see the openings of the pulmonary veins. You can see these two nice openings right over here on the right and the left. This should give you an idea that this area is the base and this is formed mostly by the left atrium. You may have also noticed some parts of the great vessels coming in the back and even you can appreciate the esophagus here. When you notice a muscular tube passing directly on the back, that right there is your esophagus and if you were to look in the front, a hard tube, very cartilaginous in structure, almost giving a C shape, that is your trachea. So, this was the anterior surface, this was the posterior surface. How about the floor? On the floor you can see it's built completely flat and it's composed by both the right and the left ventricles and it rests on the diaphragm, right on the central tendon. Of course the central tendon will be covered with the pericardium. You have the right border formed by the right atrium and almost to the oracle as well. And then you have finally the left border. The superior part is made of all these great vessels you look at individually. Once you have oriented yourself, then you can start appreciating every individual part. So let's pick out the individual features. First and foremost, let's see, over here you have the right oracle. If I were to lift it up, you will see a coronary sulcus here, also known as the atrioventricular sulcus. This is where you have the passage of the branch of the right coronary artery. Rather, it is the entire right coronary artery which passes through here. It's not really easily appreciable here, but this is that same group. That same artery would then go on the back side and it would ultimately form a branch here. In 80% of the cases, it forms the posterior interventricular artery. Coming back to the front, you can again see the right ventricle interventricular sulcus right over here and you can see an artery descending down in front and even a vein as well. The vein actually is the anterior interventricular vein which as it goes on the back side will form the great cardiac vein. Here I am lifting it up to show you the left atrial base. This is where you have the passage of the veins and they would all drain into the coronary sinus right back into the right atrium. This is also the region where you have the oblique sinus. The transverse sinus is actually right up above where you're passing behind the, here as I pass my fingers, right behind the pulmonary and the aorta, right in this region where I'm passing my finger, but it should be in front of the superior vena cava. This is the transverse sinus. These are two sinuses which are not really physically there but they are present due to the pericardial covering. Moving on, we can see the left ventricle right here and the left auricle. It's very nicely appreciable here. Right over here from the right ventricle you have the pulmonary trunk and you can see dividing it into two. 
a right and the left one openings. They go into the right and left lungs respectively. Right to the right of that is the ascending aorta and the arch. You may notice on the arch, you can see three openings. This is a bit of a memorization required here. Keep in mind that the opening from the right is the brachiocephalic trunk. And then the left, you have the common carotid and then the subclavian, the, the left common carotid. The right common carotid and right subclavian will come from this brachiocephalic trunk. So this is just a bit of memorization here, but you can see all three nicely in order. And as we go further, you can see how the arch becomes descending right over here. And as I already showed you, the esophagus and the trachea on the back side. Beyond this, the other great vessel you see here is the superior vena cava. And you may have noticed it is really collapsed and thin, but it is still a great vessel and it enters into the right atrium. The inferior vena cava, on the other hand, is nicely appreciated on the base. Here you can see that same opening. Having done that, let us finally look on the inside of the heart. Here, as I open the heart, you see a whole host of features here, and they might be really daunting in the middle, so let's take it bit by bit. First and foremost, I would like to show you the atrial part. For that, I'm going to basically put it on its side so that the right atrium is shown here. Now, you're gonna to have to pay attention here. You see, there's a rough part of the right atrium and then there's also a smooth part where I'm pointing my finger you may have noticed that this is really smooth in fact you can appreciate a fossa right where the smooth part is that is a remnant of the uh, foramen ovale this is the fossa ovalis around this part you also have the opening of the coronary sinus and it's not really easily to appreciate here the remainder of the rough part that is simply your pectinate muscles it is important to note the point where the rough and the smooth meet, that is your crista terminalis. The crista terminalis is actually formed by demarcation. The smooth part will come into the rough part and the rough part extends into the right auricle. Anyway, having that said, from the right atrium, we'll then move on to the right ventricle. And you can see here, that this right ventricle is divided from the right atrium by these cusps. The cusps are connected to these corda tendini, right over here. You can see these thin fibrous cords and the cords themselves are attached to the papillary muscles. Here are your papillary muscles. You can see that one is broken but the other one is intact. The remainder of the rough part you see on the back, that is the trabeculae carne muscles. You may notice there will also be other sort of muscles here, such as moderator bands, which extend from one end of the wall to the other end of the wall, some vertical ones as well, but uh, you won't find them in every sort of specimen, and that's fine. What is visible there is the only thing that will be asked. The valve on the other hand, on the right side, this is the tricuspid valve. And the one on the left, this one, this parachute right here, is your mitral valve or bicuspid valve. And once again, you can see these corda tendine very nicely. All came to a papillary muscle, which is once again, unfortunately, disconnected from the walls. But the remainder, trabeculae, carne, as usual. From the right atrium to the right ventricle, from this point on, you will then move on to the pulmonary trunk. And uh, as I said, you need to be really careful here, because sometimes it is very difficult to appreciate, differentiate between the aorta and the pulmonary trunk. But just recall that the pulmonary trunk will always be to the left of the aorta. The arch of the aorta goes around it actually. So from here, I know that this opening right over here is my pulmonary trunk going up above. Obviously, without a scope, we can't see on the inside, but there you also have valves there known as the semilunar valve. And each of them also has an opening for the coronary vessels. Beyond this, there's really not much else to ask in the OSPI. But this was as far as the specimen is concerned. Now, what would happen if the specimen was really, you know, mangled up? And from that, we move on to this specimen right here. 
It's big and beautiful, but unfortunately it's also broken. You have a broken heart right over here. But one thing that you may have noticed is that this one has its pericardium still attached to it. As I mentioned before, the pericardium is the covering of the heart. Uh, think of it as the heart being an orange. If the inside of the heart is your pulpy, juicy part, the outside is the orange peel, the pericardium. But the pericardium itself has a fibrous layer and a serous layer. And if you want to basically go back to the orange analogy, the outer peel would be the fibrous, the inner white stuff on the fleshy, pulpy part, that would be the serous part. So when you see this one, don't be afraid of this, the exact same format still applies. So, and by the way, in your OSPI, everything will be kept in its proper position, so you, that's some, you don't need to worry. However, still, right in front, I'm going to hold this in its anatomical position. And I'm also going to cover it with the pericardium. And right over here, you can see the heart in its anatomical position. Once again, as a quick review, the anterior surface formed by the right ventricle, which is mostly destroyed here. The posterior base formed by the left atrium. And you can see how you have these pulmonary veins entering on from both sides. You can even see the esophagus on the back side. Once again, the muscular tube, which is really collapsed and the patent trachea right here. It's still patent because of the cartilage present there. These are the things will be on the back side. And on the base, as usual, made by the two ventricles, although again mangled up, but here is your base which lies on the diaphragm. What else can we appreciate? Here you can see the arch of aorta ascending and to the left of that, as I mentioned, the pulmonary trunk. Look how it goes nicely underneath. In some specimens, you can still see the ligamentum arteriosum, which is the remnant of the connection between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta, the ductus arteriosus. Here you can see the arch of aorta opened up on the top. That's why we cannot see the brachiocephalic trunk, the common uh, carotid and the subclavian. Moving downwards on the inside, this should be fun. Here you can see the right atrium very nicely. And you can see how this part we're looking at is the smooth part, the sinus venerum part. And here, as we go below, you can see that there's an opening of the inferior vena cava from down below and opening of the superior vena cava right over here. This part is your, the, uh, the tricuspid valve. And it's quite uh, thick right over here. That's because of the problem. But you can see once again, cords, quarter tendony, the papillary muscles, and the pectic muscles are over here. These are your trabecular carni on the bottom, and a nice interventricular septum in the middle. The fossa ovalis can be appreciated nicely over here. Again, it's just a remnant. You can just see an impression. You won't see an actual circle in most cases. On the left side, the exact same story, but a lot of the structures are intact. It's a repeat of mostly what I've said previously. For the pericardium, once it covers the entirety of the heart, this is again where you'll see the oblique sinus and the triangular sinus, as I mentioned, in front of the superior vena cava, but behind the aorta and the trunk. And uh, beyond this, clinically, if you want some nice clinical info to add, that uh, these sinuses are actually good spots to put your pacemakers. In some cases, uh, patients who have difficulty, you have arrhythmias, where the heart does not beat in a regular fashion or in its right amount of fashion. In those cases, we put a pacemaker in these sinuses. And these basically give the jolt needed to keep the heart rhythm in check. Another clinical to note is where the esophagus was. Sometimes if you want to do a more appropriate echocardiography or more accurate, this esophagus is where we pass an endoscopy and an echocardiographic machine, ultrasound, to take note of the heart and all of its functioning. And with that, this was basically the heart specimens and how to spot them during the viva. Hope this lesson was useful to you and we'll continue on with other specimens in our next lecture.